Did you know single page applications are a lot faster in terms of loading and functionality, and they are really easy to create. So if you want to learn how to do that, make sure you watch this video throughout the whole way, because I'm going to be sharing a lot of tools, a lot of tips that's going to help you create some amazing single page application. All right, guys, so let's identify what is a multi-page application and what is a single page application. And those of you who already know, so this is going to be a refresher for you. For, but those of you who do not know, you are going to be amazed. So let's find out. So let's say you go to this website, which is codewithmark.com, and then you go to different pages. And what does that mean is like when they say, for example, I go to about section, right? And just notice right over here, this particular one, if this refreshes it, which means it's going to load the page and load up all the JavaScript library and then load up the content of that page. So let's click on this and then make sure you draw, look at write this right on this icon, which is a refresh button. And what that does is it kind of rotates, rotates, and then loads up the page. And so if you take a look at the, the network tab, so by the way, if you're using Chrome, you could just right click and then click on inspect, and then this will come up and then go to the network tab. So whenever we click on any one of these buttons, so let's say we click on resources, and you will notice that all of these libraries and function and uh, pictures and everything else, they load up. If I go over here, they're gonna reload it and everything else. So that is considered a multi-page framework. Multi-page framework. Some people call it a, a you know MVC, whatever you want to call it. So let's go over to the another one, <coughs> single page one. So if we do the same thing, so if I click on let's say features, it just instantly changes, and this right over here, it does not rotate or does not load the page up. Because the only thing that loads up is just pretty much the content, right? So let's look at its network. So we go over here, we go to the network for just for giggles. So we'll just refresh it so it has to load up all the stuff right here, right? So I'm just gonna click on uh, what you can do is let's just say I'll show you another portrait here. So whenever you have all these libraries saved up here, right? And let's say you want to uh, close this out, meaning clear all this out, all you do is click on this red button in chrome and then this will turn into green i mean black rather and then you click on it again then it's gonna clear up everything in here and as a you know and that's that so if i click on let's say features you will see how many different libraries loads up so that's it basically what this does is it sends a json request actually a ajax request to this which gets these JSON features, and this will load up over here. So now that you know the difference between a multi-page, meaning every time we click on a different app or different thing, it's gonna reload the whole thing as compared to, which is a single page application, which means just part of the application will get Ajax request, get the information and display it. So let's take a look at a two example that I wanna share with you. So for example, I have this, simple single page web application so if i refresh it let me just do the same thing right click inspect then go to the network tab and let's reload this and now you will notice if i clear this out and if i click on about and then go back here so right now you'll notice that wow only thing that really loads up is the image file so let's go over here and let me clear it up one more time. And now if I do this, nothing loads up. Like, how is that the case? If I click from here, only image loads up. And then if I click over here, nothing loads up. But yet the content is displayed. So this is something that I call in-page coding, which means this content part of the code is built into the page, which we will look into it as we go further in this video. And by the way, if you really enjoy this kind of video, the content that I put out, make sure you subscribe so that way you get more of these amazing video that's gonna help you create a amazing web applications that 
in a record time and you are gonna take your web programming skills to the next level a lot faster and also i have some courses available for you to speed up the process and also i offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need some help make sure you click on the link in the description in which you can get in touch with me so let's move on so one of this is what i was saying was before this is known as in-page uh, content where everything is loaded within the page. You just display it as you need it. So let's go to the next part of it in which I will go over here. It looks something similar, but you will notice that now let's reload the page. So here it is. So I'm going to clear this out and let's see if I click on about. And now you notice it loaded up the page as well as this particular uh, file from an AJAX request and if I go over here let's clear it up one more time if I click on contact and then it loaded up this as well so this is on demand loading so we have <clears throat> page content and then on demand loading so let's take a look at it what in the world does this mean so let's go over here so I'm gonna bring up this application the paint uh, not this one this one yes so let's look at how does the on demand loading and how the page contact work. So basically, let's say this is your container, which is this screen, which is your uh, web browser screen, right? And then uh, page loading, you have all of this content right over here. But on this container, which a viewer is going to see right there, right there. So let's say when you click this button, all these navigation buttons right so let's say if you click this button right over here so this button will have a content of this so basically what you're doing is you're telling like hey whenever this button is clicked take this content and then show it right over here and then someone when presses this button you want to take this content which is part of the page and then show it up here right so that's that and on demand loading is what I call this is the same concept so we have this container which is your view and then within the container we have a buttons I know I'm not really good at drawing good thing I'm not an artist so this is what it is and if this is just screen container is what I call this is where the content is getting loaded right and then right over here this is where your server is or another page or whatever you got there so whenever someone clicks on this button you say hey Go over here, grab this page or piece of content, and then bring it up via the AJAX request, and then load it up on this page, rather than loading up this whole page all over again. So let's look at the first, which is the in-page content. So let's look at that first. So this is the uh, in-page content code, and not to worry, I'm gonna give you this so that way you can download it and start to play around with it. So that way you have an understanding of how does this work and then also include it in your web development projects. So I am just using the Bootstrap framework and on this one I'm using the 4.5.3 Bootstrap, which is the CSS as well as the JavaScript library. And then also I'm using jQuery and those of you know how much I love jQuery. And if you are interested in learning, and you, if you are a beginner and you're interested in learning, jQuery have a course that you can take that's gonna help you master jQuery in little to no time. So make sure you check that out. So let's move on. I am not gonna spend too much time on like how do you build this particular uh, navigation and everything else, but in a nutshell, this particular part of the code is just this black line right here. That's it. And then after that, <clears throat> I have this this code, which is like a container in which it changes the uh, name of it. So let me put this side by side. So for example, if I click on uh, about this where it says home, it's going to change the name of it. And then underneath it, it's going to be the container where it's going to load up the particular uh content of that page so that's what's happening over here so this div is where the the name is going to be displayed and then this one is where the page content will be displayed and then underneath it 
this is like a in-page loading, not on-demand loading, but in-page loading. Then I created another dream, uh, another div, which I have a class name uh, screens. And this is the part of the content that's gonna be loaded when you click on the home button. So which will be right over here. So let's say we go over here and then we click on this home button. Let me close this out. So when I click on this home button, this piece of content is gonna be loaded, which is the H2 lag, H2 tag, your picture, as well as a little bit of a text underneath it, which is right here, H1 image, and then P tag. And then same thing will happen with the about, and then basically that's that. So let's take a look at the JavaScript that makes it happen. So let's go over here, as you know, as I said before, I love, love, love jQuery because it is so powerful, even though it's been around for, it seems like more than a decade, which is a good thing, because that goes to show you that how powerful it is and is how many different companies use this particular framework because it's amazing and it's most important thing why I love it is because it is browser compatible, which means you can use this particular one, any browser and will work the same way no matter which it is, whether you're using a crappy Internet Explorer or the best of your uh, Google Chrome or Edge, Firefox, Safari, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's gonna work across the board everywhere. So let's take a look at it, what happens when you click on this particular uh, button. So let's go over here. So let's say I have this button right here, right? So let me just reload the page. So right now, this is the URL. And when I click on this button, which is the home page, it's gonna be executing this code, which is the menu. So let's look at this particular code, what happens when we build on the menu part of it. So these are my menu item. So the first one is a home. So what I wanna do is I wanna take, uh, this is the class for all three button, and then I have a screen name, whether it's a home, about, content, <clears throat> right? That's what these are. So anytime I click on it, I wanna get that. So this, this is the attribute, this is the class, which, when you click on it, it's going to kick off the event. So let's go now, right over here. So whenever I click on the button, which has a class of btn underscore menu, it's going to go and get the, first of all, the name, the attribute, which is a screen name. And then what it's also going to do is going to add a hashtag forward slash screen name. So let's go over here. So we have this URL. Whenever I click on this, it's gonna go pound forward slash home. And you will see it does this. So it's kind of like giving you a, a unique URL. So if I go click on this about, that's gonna be about content, it's content, and then home, it's home again. And that's exactly what's happening over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the screen name based on whatever button that is clicked. So if I click over here, which is this, your about, contact, and home. That is what's happening in this piece of code. And then I'm using the, whatever the name that is, screen name it is, based on that particular one, I am calling the container, which is the div, which has the, uh, particular class so let's go to home let's see where is that which is this one right here within this div so I'm saying hey go to document find me wherever this class is within this class give me all of this and then assign it to s1 and then from s1 I want to load it to my screen container which is right over here where you'll see e0 and then HTML is pretty much saying, go dump it into HTML. So my E0, which is this one, and it has a, a class of screen container. So let's go over here, which is right over here. It's just an empty div, there's nothing in it. So we're just gonna go and uh, dump all of the content of the screen of home and put it in here. And that's exactly how this works. So now that we have 
accomplish this, which is called a page uh, loading content. And then next we're gonna look at the own demand loading part of it. So let's refresh this again and let's look at it. So let's say if I click on about, it's gonna go and load up the page that is in the about section. So let's take a look at that. So let's go back one page, go over here, and then bring up this. And now you notice there are no uh, pages to be displayed. This is completely empty. And I left it there intentionally because there's nothing in here that's gonna be loaded up, right? So let's go over here and all of your pages, now I have divided and put it into this particular folder. And you will see how easily and quickly you can load this up within your or application. So it's the same concept as before. When you click on the BTN and then it's gonna get the screen name based on the button like we just talked about, it. it's gonna change the hash, which is the URL. And then it's gonna add the screen name to that. But this time around, what we are gonna do is we're going to use a jQuery function that goes to this particular URL, which is, let's say this is your index file, and it's going to go into this folder, look for this file, and then it's going to get the content of that file and load it in here. This one line of code does all of that and you are going to be so surprised. So like, oh my God, if you never have done this, you're going to be blown away when you start using this. This is going to be powerful, powerful stuff for you guys. And those of you already know, that's great, man. And those of you like, hey man, I know a better way to do this. Make sure you comment below in which, tell us, how would you do this differently? Or how do you currently do it that is a lot better than this so that way the community of our this particular channel can benefit from your knowledge and thank you so much in advance for sharing your knowledge to helping us grow as a professional web developers. So that is that guys. And then the same thing happens. It goes to the screen for the about, the content, and that's that. So let's take a look. So let's say if I play this out, I click on the content and then the only content loads up and nothing else. And the, But the most important part is it doesn't load up all of the libraries as it initially does. So let's go over here. So if I load this up, it's gonna load up all of these, which is uh, you know a handful of libraries. There's like six things that it loads up. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you count it at the bottom over here, it tells you there's six things. But once those things, six things are loaded and this is, uh, gonna only load up a specific thing. So this is what I call own demand loading. This is own demand loading. And then this is your page loading, which means everything is within your page. So hopefully this thing helps you out. And if you found this beneficial, or if you feel like, hey man, my friend can really use this, make sure you share this. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. And so I have a link in the description in which you can go and get your free digital gift. Just make sure you click on that URL and I will post it right somewhere on this page on the video, that way it will help you go get that too. Until next time guys, happy coding.